Welcome to the new Beyond 20 video series, What's New in Sharewell Service Management. I'm Guy Baker, and I'll be your host for this series. Before we begin, please be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the like button below. In this video series, we will walk you through new features for Sharewell Service Management that will be released in version 10.2, scheduled for release in February 2021. This video will demonstrate how to create and use the all-new Lifecycle Editor for Business Objects. This is a brand new tool which allows you to create life cycles using a visual editor, which is quite similar to the one-step editor. There are also new form controls for major business objects, which display the current state of the record and provide navigation control to transition the record forwards and backwards in the life cycle. Don't worry about your existing business objects when you upgrade to version 10.2 as the existing legacy lifecycle method may be used in parallel or in place of the new lifecycle editor. We'll cover how to migrate a business object lifecycle to the new editor in a future video. Let's begin by taking a look at our incident lifecycle as it is displayed in a UML state machine. Notice there are places where the lifecycle reverts or diverts to a pending state and then resumes the normal workflow. Using the lifecycle editor, we can replicate this diagram visually and then add the lifecycle form control to the business object's main form to add a navigation controls and status display. The lifecycle editor is only available in blueprints and only for major business objects. Let's begin by creating a new blueprint and then navigate to Incident, and then click on Edit the Life Cycle. Now we've already added the four basic states that you should have in order to have a valid life cycle. So you need to have a, a new, an open, and a closed stage, or uh, status stage. So let's take a look at this. So each, uh, we have a toolbox over on the left that has two actions. You can have a status or you can have a jump, which is equal to a transition. If we look at our new stage, the new stage has the in cart status. Then we have an open stage, which has the in progress status. And then we have our closed stage, which has the closed status. And we've added a reopened stage and status and in order to, for this to be a valid workflow or a valid uh, life cycle we need to add a transition from the reopened state back to the in progress state so we added a jump at the end and this allows us to get back so now we have a valid life cycle for incident but we're not quite matching our diagram so if we go back and look at our diagram we see that we also have a new state, an assigned state, a pending, all before we get to in progress. So let's go ahead and let's add those states. So we're going to add in the new uh, stage, we're going to add the new status. Notice we don't have to change the stage name when we drop in between. And then we're going to add an assigned status before we get to open. And for this one, we will need to change this, the stage. So this will be assigned. And we'll change our stage name from new to open. And notice it didn't allow us to go to close or reopen because we haven't we place the status prior to the closed stage. So until you get to a stage, it won't allow you to select that stage. If we get past the open stage here, we'll, we'll be able to see closed. All right, next up, we need to add a pending status. And the pending status is before we get to in progress. So we're going to do is we're going to drop 
a new status right on top of assigned and notice that now we have a fork we have a, tr a fork where we can go either to in progress or in this case we want to go to pending and then notice that we have a red button there that says that we're not uh, we don't have a path to close so we're going to have to add a jump on pending and the jump is going to allow us to jump all the way back to in progress once we have our information all right so taking a peek here after we get to in progress we can uh, also have a pending and that one is to create a problem so if we have a known issue or we have a um, workaround we're going to have a pending another pending for in progress so we're going to add one more pending we need to add a resolve status in there between open and closed. So the resolve status goes here. And then we're going to add a pending in case this needs a workaround or it needs to be a, a problem created for it. So we'll drop that right on top of in progress. And let's call this, uh, because we already have that state, it's actually going to ask us for this one. So let's call this one, or call it known issue. So we'll drop our jump on here and jump when we have a known issue. When we have a workaround, we go to resolved. So there's our new workflow. When we're pending and we receive the information we need, we go to in progress. If we're in progress and it's a problem, we can't resolve it, we need to create a known issue. When the known issue has a workaround or a solution, we go to resolved. And then when the uh, incident is resolved, um, we can uh, either close or reopen it. Okay, so this all looks good. We have all of our workflow in there. We're going to save it. Click OK. That's how you create the workflow. Now let's see how we add this to our form. Now that we've added our lifecycle to the incident object, we need to add our transition status control, which is displayed here, and our lifecycle progress indicator to the main form of incident. So we've added those in. We've published our incident and let's our blueprint and let's go ahead and let's see how it looks. So here we have a new incident that's in the in progress status. Now we left it this way just so you could uh, tell what progress status uh, used to be in the old form. You can see in the new form it'll say in progress right here in the status bar. And then the next status is right here. It says if we want to resolve it. So if we go ahead and we change this to resolve. If we change it to known issue, it would take us to pending. And if we take it to uh, resolve, so we'll have to put some actions in there. We'll show you that in another video before we can go known issue. We can known issue is not an actual status that we can go to. We'll just go ahead and move this one to resolved to show you that it goes over to resolved. And then once we close it, it would go over to closed. Well, I hope this video has been informative for you. Please don't forget to subscribe to the Beyond 20 LLC channel on YouTube to view more videos on ShareWell, ITIL, and other ITSM solutions provided by Beyond 20, or visit our website at www.beyond20.com to learn how Beyond 20 can assist your company with ITSM training and consulting, as well as ShareWell development and administration.